clinic. So yeah, I'm still going and, and still learning, you know, uh, still learning all the time. You know, I go at it every day, every day as I enter a clinic, I go out there as a student of the horse, you know, learning just like uh, the students that are there. I tell them that we're all in the same boat. We're all here to learn. We're all here to get better and share knowledge. So you betcha, uh, still going, still rolling, still learning. When these people come to your clinics, what are some of the biggest problems that they seem to have, Craig? Oh, I think people, uh, you know, you you got to learn to have a great feel for these horses. And a lot of people are really too handsy. Their hands are a little heavy. Their hands are a little fast. They do everything with their hands. They're what I call hand-dominated riders. And so, again, if we could learn to remember our riding aids or our seat, in our legs. If we could do a little more with our seat, a little more with our legs, slow our hands down, be a little softer with our hands, I think these horses would be exactly the same. You know, people need to learn to be patient, not only uh, with their horses, but with themselves. And uh, and go at it every day. Each day when I ride, I, I literally, I literally, Howard, say to myself, Craig, ride better today than you did yesterday. I think if you go at it with a conscientious effort to do that, uh, then then you literally will maybe get better each and every day. So uh, I think it's something that you have to kind of have on your mind and think about, and that's part of the mental game that's very important. And so, again, horsemanship is uh, uh, physical, mental, and emotional. And, uh, you know, the one thing you can control in life is your emotions. So uh, stay cool and calm in the heat of battle. Outthink those horses. Be willing to slow down uh, when things get bad. Outthink those horses. Put those pauses. Put those recesses in there. All that becomes very important, you know. And I think the more experience you get, the more you realize how important that those kind of things are. Well, and we as humans always tend to like to have things planned out. We're going to get this done with the horse today, come hell or high water, and it doesn't always work that way, does it? <laughs> You know what? That's a great statement there, Howard. You're exactly right. You know, ride the horse like he is today. Do a good job. Maybe tomorrow he'd, he'd be a little better. You know, just because you got something that you got in mind, maybe that horse doesn't feel good today. Maybe he's hurting someplace you're not aware of. You know, just recognize that he's trying. Reward that try, you know, and maybe move on to something else. And maybe tomorrow or the next day, that problem you thought you had uh, won't even be there. So, yeah, you know, just uh, uh, you got to work with the horse and realize that they're they're a lot like us in some ways. You know, they're living, breathing, decision-making animals, and they have good days and bad days just like you and me. Well, Craig, you always have something going on, and, of course, your uh, cowboy race is one uh, that's been a good one and had a lot of uh, following. Uh, what, else, what else you got going on? Anything? Well, you know, we're always busy. We're We've added on here. We put on uh, new trails, new obstacle courses, added land to the ranch here. You know, the uh, stream cowboy race is going and growing worldwide. You know, we're always up at the Calgary Stampede with that event. Uh, we have our world finals each year, have contestants coming from all over the world. You know, just so many things going on. My son is out there doing clinics. Cole Cameron doing a phenomenal job. Uh, he's been invited to... Uh, be a wild card participant this year. It's coming up here at the Road to the Horse, so that's going to be exciting. So, uh, man, so much happening, so much going on all the time. You know, it just, you know, it's just uh, with in the horse industry, we we meet so many interesting people and interesting horses, and we just feel grateful and blessed that we get to do what we do and have what we have. So, uh, yeah, we keep it going on. How long has your son been putting on in clinics? Well, you know, Cole's been doing it. For a pretty good while. He's uh, uh, 31 uh, years old, and uh, boy, he's just getting better. He's, he's showing uh, rain cow horses and stuff like that, and boy, he's been to Australia and has a big following down there. Uh, he just got back from Kansas City, and uh, he's going back up to Oklahoma this week, so uh, man, he's really busy, so uh, we're real proud of him, and uh, he's making a great horseman, and he, he goes at it the right way with a good attitude about uh, being a student of the horse, and it's great to see him following in my footsteps. You know, it uh, makes a guy proud. So, yeah, we're really tickled about that. You got any other kids that are interested in uh, following in your footsteps? 
Well, I mean, you know, hopefully some of the apprentices we've had over the years are, are doing the same thing. But, uh, yeah, Cole's our only son and the only child. And uh, so uh, Jews, we just feel lucky that he's doing what he's doing. And he just, uh, done everything he's done is just to make us proud. So we're really excited about that. You know, he went to Texas A&M and played football there. And then when he graduated, he went back to A&M and got a, another scholarship on the rodeo team and made the college national finals and uh, got his master's degree. But he just said, you know, I want to stick with the horses. And so, uh, shoot, we couldn't be any prouder or happier about that. He's doing a great job. Talk a little bit more about this extreme cowboy race, how that evolved and how it's still evolving. Well, you know, Extreme Cowboy Association, it's an association now, EXCA. So if you're interested in that, you just go to ExtremeCowboyAssociation.com. We always tell people, don't let the extreme thing scare you because we have novice division, non-pro division, greenhorn, all this stuff, uh, all different ways to compete with people at the same level you're at. But it's, it's just a lot of fun. You know, I, I thought of the idea, I thought, when I was a kid, you know, <clears throat> today... All the horses are specialized. We have cutting horses, reining horses, roping horses, barrel horses. I thought, you know, when I was a kid, the horse had to do it all. I said, man, I, what would have been an event where you had to go out there and do a little bit of everything? And that's how I came up with the idea. And when we first came up with it, we had to put it on TV. And I mean, people just went wild and they just loved it. And uh, because it, it's something just about everybody can do. So, uh, Again, it's challenging for you and your horse. It's fun. You meet great people. You don't ever have, a, have to have a very expensive horse. And what's neat about it is it's open to any kind of horse. I mean, we take mares, gildings, stallions. We take Arabians, quarter horses, upper breads, mules, you name it. And uh, where they go out there and compete and have a lot of fun. So we're really excited about EXCA, Extreme Cowboy Association. Amazingly, it's the... Uh, picked up all around the world. It's in Australia, it's in Europe, uh, just all different places, Canada, and I mean, just going and growing because it's fun. So we hope people like, get involved and check it out and uh, get your card and start competing. It's a blast. Now you talk about the, uh, both mares and gildings. Sometimes people sell some of these mares short as riding horses because I've ridden quite a few mares over the year, probably more mares than gildings and always kind of liked them. Well, there's some great mares out there. You know, we wouldn't have any horses without the mares. But, you know, the mares are a little bit like a stallion. They give you a little bit more life, a little bit more oomph out there. And, uh, man, I'm like you, Howard. I've ridden some great mares, really good mares. You know, everybody thinks they have to have a gilding. And, you know, the gilding's nice. He's kind of the same sun up and sun down. But, boy, those mares, I'll tell you what, I've had some great mares in my life. Some really, that would really give you their heart and do anything for you. And uh, so, yeah, don't be afraid to buy a mare. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, shoot, I've had, I've had some great ones. Hey, what would you like to add that I haven't been perceptive enough to ask you about, Craig? <laughs> well, I think you've done a pretty good job, Howard. You do a great job all the time, you know, uh, because you're a good listener. I think, you know, you learn when you're listening. And, uh, uh, you know, I think if you and I just keep things open and growing and stay humble and kind and, and go out there as a student of the horse, you know, willing to listen, you know, uh, that's just what creation is all about. You know, if we keep that open mind, uh, I think we're going to keep learning, especially when it comes to these horses, because we listen to them. Every move they make, every wiggle of their ear, every swish of a tail has meaning, you know. We open up to that kind of stuff. We're going to start seeing a little bit more and understanding a little more takes a long time to become a, a horseman. That's that's the direction I'm headed. I'm not interested in being a clinician. I'm interested in being a horse man. But to be a horse man, my horse has to be a man horse. In other words, a two-way street. Uh, teaching is the art of communication. And communication is two minds listening and two minds open. So we all need to be a kind of aware of that. And it's not just us uh, making the horse or uh, teaching the horses, also us about uh, learning from the horse as well. I think we keep that great attitude in horses. We call it disposition. So our disposition, our attitude needs to be 
a really good one too. You know, we want that from the horse. I think the horse wants that from us. Okay, I'd like to recommend you folks uh, get Craig's books, Ride Smart and Ride Smarter. And if people want to get more information on your website, how do they do that? Oh, you just go to uh, Ride Smart, uh, RideSmartHorsemanship.com, and uh, you should come down to the ranch here in Texas. We, we feel like we have the best facility in the States, and, man, more fun. And you come to a Craig Camera Clinic, you're going to be – uh, right here riding with me and or Cole from the time you get here from the time you leave and they don't call them the riding at the clinics of them all for nothing so uh, give us a call uh, check us out and Howard we again are honored to be on your show and thanks for having us up there and shoot don't wait so long to call back we need to do this a little more regular 